You eat 1,200 calories and burn 1,500, creating a 300-calorie deficit, yet the scale goes up. How can you be doing everything right, but still feel like your body is betraying you? Today, I'll explain calorie deficits to you like you're 5 years old. And by the end, you'll understand exactly how fat loss actually works, why the scale lies daily, and whether that dramatic overnight weight drop was real progress or biological theater. A calorie deficit means you're burning more energy than you consume. Your body needs a certain amount of energy, measured in calories, to keep you alive and moving. When you eat less than that amount, your body has to find energy elsewhere. That elsewhere is your stored body fat, which exists specifically as your backup fuel tank. But here's what nobody tells you. Your body doesn't just flip a switch from food energy to fat energy. It's constantly using both. And the ratio changes throughout the day based on what you've eaten, how recently you've eaten, your activity level, and even your stress. The deficit forces your body to dip deeper into fat stores over time, but it's never a clean, immediate transaction. Think of your body like a hybrid car that can run on both gasoline and battery power. During the day, especially after meals, you're running primarily on gasoline, the food you've eaten. At night while sleeping, or during extended periods between meals, you shift more toward battery power, your stored fat. A calorie deficit is like having a gas tank that can't quite fill up completely, forcing you to rely more heavily on that backup battery over time. The 3,500 calories equals one pound of fat rule is a guideline derived from the energy content in a pound of body fat. So a 3,500 calorie deficit should theoretically equate to a pound of fat law, but it gets thrown around like gospel when it's more guideline than law. In practice, it's messier. Your body doesn't store pure fat. Body fat tissue contains water, connective tissue, and other components. The actual energy content varies between people and even changes as you lose weight. Early in a diet, when your body has more fat to lose, the math works fairly well. But as you get leaner, each pound becomes harder to lose, and the 3,500 calorie rule becomes less reliable. Your metabolism also fights back. As you lose weight, your body requires fewer calories to maintain basic functions. You're literally carrying less mass around. Simultaneously, your body becomes more efficient, finding ways to preserve energy. This adaptive response means that what started as a 500 calorie deficit might shrink to 300 or 200 calories over time, slowing your progress even if you haven't changed your diet or exercise. Here's where it gets wild. The scale measures everything, not just fat. Your total body weight includes fat, muscle, bones, organs, blood, food in your digestive system, and water stored throughout your tissues. Important. Water alone can fluctuate by several pounds daily based on sodium intake, carbohydrate consumption, hormone levels, inflammation, and even the weather. When you see a four pound drop overnight, basic math reveals the truth. To lose four pounds of actual fat, you'd need a deficit of roughly 14,000 calories. That's nearly impossible in 24 hours, unless you're running ultra marathons while fasting. What actually happened? You lost water weight. Carbohydrates store with water in your muscles and liver, about 3 grams of water for every gram of carb. When you cut carbs dramatically or create a large deficit, your body burns through these stored carbs first, releasing the attached water. This shows up as rapid weight loss on the scale, but you haven't touched your fat stores yet. Consider this real-world scenario. Mike decides to start keto on Monday. He weighs 220 pounds. By Friday, he's down to 215 pounds and thinks he's lost five pounds of fat. The reality? His body stored roughly 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates, each carrying three times its weight in water. Sodium also plays a major role in daily weight fluctuations. High sodium intake causes your body to retain extra water to maintain proper blood concentration. When sodium drops through sweating, reduced intake, or natural hormonal cycles, that extra water gets released. Women experience additional water retention changes throughout their menstrual cycle, with weight swings of 3 to 5 pounds being completely normal. The menstrual cycle creates predictable weight patterns that many women mistake for diet failure. During the luteal phase, progesterone increases water retention. Many women see their weight climb 2 to 4 pounds in the week before their period, regardless of their calorie deficit. Then, as hormones shift during menstruation, that water weight drops rapidly often revealing the fat loss that was happening all along, but masked by hormonal water retention. Here's the kicker. Your digestive system alone can account for several pounds of weight variation. 
Food and liquid move through your stomach and intestines over 24 to 72 hours. A large meal, increased fiber intake, or changes in bathroom habits can shift the scale significantly without affecting your fat loss progress at all. This explains why weighing yourself before and after a large meal can show increases of 2 to 3 pounds immediately. That food has physical weight and takes up space in your digestive tract. Add the water needed for digestion and you're carrying significantly more mass until everything processes through your system. This is why fitness professionals obsess over trends rather than daily weigh-ins. Your weight will bounce around within a range, but fat loss shows up as a downward trend over weeks and months. Weighing yourself daily can provide data, but only if you understand that each individual number is mostly noise. Body composition matters more than total weight. Muscle tissue is denser than fat, so you can lose fat and gain muscle simultaneously while seeing minimal change on the scale. This is especially common for beginners who start strength training while dieting. Their body composition improves dramatically. Less fat, more muscle, but the scale barely budges. Measurements, photos, and how clothes fit become better progress indicators than weight alone. Here's the part that changed everything. Understanding the different rates at which your body loses various types of weight. Water weight can disappear overnight. Glycogen stores, your carb reserves, deplete within days. Fat loss happens over weeks and months. Muscle loss, unfortunately, can happen relatively quickly if your deficit is too aggressive or you're not doing resistance training. The speed of initial weight loss often creates false expectations. People lose 5 pounds in their first week of dieting and assume they'll lose 20 pounds by month's end. What actually happened is they lost some water, some glycogen, maybe a small amount of fat, and possibly some muscle. The dramatic early drop levels off quickly as the body adjusts, leading many to think their diet stopped working. This expectation trap destroys more diets than actual hunger. Jennifer loses 8 pounds in her first two weeks, then only 1 pound in week 3. But here's where things get interesting. Your body composition can improve even when the scale stalls. As you continue resistance training and maintaining a modest deficit, you might lose 2 pounds of fat while gaining 1 pound of muscle. The scale shows only 1 pound lost, but your body has fundamentally changed for the better. Smaller waist, stronger, better health markers. Extreme deficits, eating far too little, actually sabotage fat loss. Your body interprets severe calorie restriction as potential starvation and responds by slowing metabolism, increasing hunger hormones, and breaking down muscle for energy. This survival mechanism helped our ancestors survive famines, but works against modern dieters trying to lose weight quickly. The optimal deficit balances progress with sustainability. This rate preserves muscle mass, maintains energy levels, and keeps your metabolism functioning normally. Faster isn't better when it comes to fat loss. It's usually counterproductive. Creating your deficit through both diet and exercise provides the best results. Cutting 250 calories from food while burning an extra 250 through activity hits your 500 calorie target without extreme restriction in either area. This approach maintains dietary flexibility while building healthy movement habits. Here's what most people never realize. Tracking becomes crucial for understanding your personal patterns. Your deficit might work differently than the textbook example due to genetics, medical conditions, medications, sleep quality, stress levels, and dozens of other factors. Some people lose weight steadily, others in whooshes followed by stalls. Both patterns can be completely normal within the same deficit. The whoosh effect deserves special mention because it confuses so many dieters. Some people maintain their deficit for weeks with minimal scale movement, then suddenly drop three to four pounds in a few days. This happens because fat cells can temporarily fill with water before releasing it all at once. The fat loss was occurring steadily, but the scale didn't reflect it until the water release happened. The psychological aspect of daily weigh-ins can't be ignored. Seeing the scale increase after days of careful eating triggers frustration and often leads to giving up entirely. Understanding normal fluctuations helps maintain perspective and stick with the process long enough for real changes to appear. Sleep and stress dramatically impacts both weight fluctuations and fat loss. Poor sleep increases cortisol and ghrelin, hormones that promote fat storage and hunger. High stress triggers similar responses. You might maintain a perfect calorie deficit, but still see stalled progress if these lifestyle factors aren't addressed. Here's a powerful example. 
Tom maintains a 400 calorie deficit for three weeks, but sleeps only five hours nightly due to work stress. His cortisol levels remain elevated, causing water retention and increased fat storage signals. Despite his mathematical deficit, his weight barely budges. When he finally gets proper sleep, he drops four pounds in five days. Not because the deficit suddenly started working, but because his stress hormones normalized and released retained water. Here's what nobody tells you about maintenance. Your new weight requires active management. Your body doesn't forget its previous weight and will attempt to return there through increased hunger and decreased metabolism. Successful long-term weight management requires ongoing attention to diet, exercise, and lifestyle factors. The plateau phenomenon becomes predictable once you understand the science. As you lose weight, your smaller body needs fewer calories, and your metabolism adapts downward. What started as a 500-calorie deficit gradually becomes 300, then 200, then zero. Breaking plateaus requires either reducing calories further or increasing activity or taking a planned diet break to reset your metabolism. Professional bodybuilders and physique competitors understand this cycle intimately. They diet aggressively for short periods, then return to maintenance calories to restore metabolic function before dieting again. This approach, called reverse dieting, helps prevent the metabolic damage that comes from prolonged extreme deficits. Your relationship with the scale ultimately determines your success. Use it as one data point among many not as the sole judge of your progress. Daily fluctuations are normal biological noise. Weekly averages provide clearer trends. Monthly photos and measurements reveal changes the scale might miss entirely. The math of fat loss is simple in theory, but complex in practice. A calorie deficit will cause fat loss over time, but the timeline, rate, and scale fluctuations vary enormously between individuals and even within the same person over different periods. Understanding this variability helps maintain realistic expectations and prevents abandoning effective approaches due to temporary scale stalls or increases. So here's the real question. Knowing that daily weight fluctuations are mostly water and waste, not fat, would you still step on the scale every morning? Or does this knowledge free you to focus on the behaviors that actually drive long-term fat loss?